Hi everyone, my name is Marie Therese Pung and I'm a PhD candidate at the Oxford Internet Institute, a DeepMind scholar and previously technology advisor to the UN Secretary General's Digital Cooperation Office. This paper anchors AI governance of the power dynamics between the global north and global south, taking a systemic, historic and post-colonial approach. By contrasting critical discourses on AI from the global south with dominant global north discourses, this paper serves as types of harms that mainstream discussions on AI governance tend to ignore, but are key to ensuring that AI technologies are safer, more equitable, and more sustainable. In addition to surfacing these gaps in mainstream AI governance discourses, I make three further points for the restructuring of AI governance processes. First, identifying the paradox of participation in AI governance, wherein the inclusion of Global South stakeholders can exist while structural harms persist. Secondly, proposing three roles for Global South actors to meaningfully engage in AI governance processes. And third, arguing that there is a historic amnesia in mainstream international AI governance, which limits the analysis and ability to mitigate present day AI harms. Before elaborating on these, I want to clarify some terms. In this paper, I define global AI governance as the international development of ethics, policy, and regulation for issues surrounding the benefits and risks of AI systems that have become too complex for a single state to address alone. This is because digital systems and organizations controlling AI development operate globally and no longer within clearly defined national jurisdictions. Global AI governance involves multi-stakeholder structures across governments, industry, civil society, standard setting bodies, and academia, working to develop standards, policy instruments, and best practices. In terms of what I mean by Global South and Global North, as Singh and Guzman articulate, we treat Global South as an imperative to focus on cognate lived experiences of the excluded, silenced, and marginalized populations as they contend with data and AI on an everyday basis. The term Global South generally refers to developing countries around the world, a geography of capitalism's externalities imprinted with colonial legacies. Critical Global South perspectives center the displaced priorities, concerns, and voices of the global majority. In terms of Global North, the dominant AI governance discourse is spearheaded by affluent governments, industry, standard setting organizations, academic institutions, military research, and philanthropic bodies, largely based in the Global North. Beyond the geographic arrangement of institutions, the Global North is also a reproduction of political, epistemic, economic, and moral hierarchies imposed during European colonization. As the Martinican philosopher Guissard puts it, the West is not in the West, it is a project, not a place. In 2019, Joe Bin and their co-authors reviewed the global landscape of AI ethics guidelines drawing attention to the underrepresentation of Africa, South and Central America and Central Asia in AI ethics debates, wherein more economically developed countries are shaping this debate more than others, which raises concerns about neglecting local knowledge, cultural pluralism and the demands of global fairness. This is important since AI adoption is increasing in these regions from its use in public welfare distribution, manufacturing, farming, healthcare delivery, disaster response, political campaigning, et cetera. Efforts to address these imbalances have been driven by the advocacy of Global South actors and those in solidarity. Out of this, the last few years have seen a growing popularity of inclusive AI governments, such as the UN Secretary General's Technology Envoy Office, the Global Partnership on AI in partnership with the International Development Research Center or UNESCO. The shared aim of these inclusive governance initiatives is to increase participation of Global South stakeholders in the development of AI governance processes. In order to mitigate rising inequality and secure the social benefits of emerging technologies for all. However, inclusive governance initiatives in mainstream global governance institutions have yet to develop adequate methodologies to address power imbalances in order to substantively engage with underrepresented stakeholder groups. This results in what Cleaver describes as the paradox of participation, where global South stakeholder inclusion can exist while structural harms persist. This is a known structural issue in global governance in general, and we are seeing this dynamic play out in global AI governance. In order to 
to secure the long-term effectiveness of Global South participation in mitigating risks of AI systems and its political economy, there is a need for the redistribution of this agenda setting, financial allocation and decision-making power. By contrasting inclusive AI governance discourse led out of global North institutions and critical discourses from the global South, this paper outlines four issue areas that are in tension with the global AI governance discourse, but that nonetheless are necessary to address if the risks of AI systems are to be meaningfully mitigated at the international level. These issue areas emerging from global South critical discourses include digital sovereignty, infrastructural and regulatory monopolies, Digital sovereignty, the collection, storage, ownership, and application of data, as well as the production and ownership of technological infrastructure by global South countries are essential prerequisites for these countries to accrue the benefits of AI, R&D, and development. Global South adoption of the regulatory landscapes and histories of Euro-America in the form of European standards organizations, as well as international standards development organizations, raise concerns of power consolidation across Western European and North American industries and governments. Regarding infrastructural monopolies, a key example is the way in which African critical data infrastructure, including submarine cables, terrestrial fiber optic networks, and data centers are majority owned by non-African telecom companies. The second issue space is ownership, pricing, and intellectual property. This lack of infrastructural ownership results in what Quet describes as foreign powers led by the US planting infrastructure in the global south engineered by their own needs and imposing privatized forms of governance. This allows them to accumulate profits from revenues derived from rent in the form of intellectual property or access to infrastructure and surveillance in the form of big data. The third issue space is labor and material supply chains of AI technologies. AI systems are increasingly being discussed by critical global south discourses in terms of their life cycles and supply chains. This means the different stages of production of an AI system, from manual data labeling and training a machine learning model, all the way to the disassembly of hardware, for example, the taking apart of GPU metals, components, and plastics. In Ghost Workers, Gray and Suri tell the stories of low paid workers who drive the AI economy annotating and classifying large volumes of data to improve algorithms. In terms of the disassembly of hardware, there are growing efforts by major tech companies to curb electronic waste. Nonetheless, the International Labour Organization identify that electronic waste is disassembled and processed by workers, including children who work on digital dump sites and are exposed to toxic chemicals. The fourth issue space is commercial exploitation, including the beta testing of technologies on traditionally marginalized populations. Beta testing, which is the testing and fine tuning of early versions of software with real users, can result in forms of commercial exploitation, where software systems are tested on populations that are systemically exposed to high risk. For example, the case of predictive policing software developed by Palantir and used by the New Orleans Police Department disproportionately targeting the African-American community. Similarly, before deploying their data analytic tool in the US and UK elections, some have argued that Cambridge Analytica beta tested their methods in the 2015 Nigerian election. To develop traction on these issue spaces in global AI governance processes, this paper proposes three roles for Global South actors. These roles must be co-constructed with Global South actors from civil society and industry to academic institutions and governments. They include challenging exclusionary governance mechanisms, providing legitimate expertise in the interpretation and localization of risks, following the argument that AI risks cannot be adequately defined by those who are, who are distanced by power and institutional safety, and providing a source of alternative governance mechanisms, for example, South-South solidarity, co-governance, democratic accountability structures, and the political economy of resistance. Beyond these three roles, critical Global South discourses also provide the insight that Global North geopolitical, infrastructural, and regulatory dominance are outcomes of historic processes that reproduce regimes of structural power privileging global North actors at the expense of global South actors. 
This paper observes a historic amnesia in mainstream international AI governance, which limits the understanding and ability to mitigate present day AI harms. To quote Albert and colleagues, global governance omits the imperial and post-colonial past and present of international relations, thereby presenting a theoretical picture of world politics that is deeply embedded in Eurocentrism and therefore exhibits serious theoretical and empirical flaws. To illustrate this, this paper uses the framework of coloniality, the socioeconomic, political, and cultural structures that survived colonialism, and recasts the popular AI governance narrative of the fourth industrial revolution in a historic light. In doing so, it highlights that the first industrial revolution relied in part on the dispossession of land, violent exploitation of people's labor, extraction of knowledge and natural resources from European colonies, and to the present day, their strategic underdevelopment. With this perspective, it becomes clearer why the fourth industrial revolution still relies on the exploitation of labor from ghost workers who annotate data, exploitation of electronic waste workers who break down hardware components of AI physical infrastructure, the mass extraction and monetization of data from global south by industry in the global north, and the extraction of mineral resources required to build the physical components of technology infrastructures upon which AI systems are developed. So how can we restructure international AI governance beyond current frameworks of inclusion and begin to materially mitigate risks and equitably distribute AI benefits for a global majority? To summarize, I propose three avenues. One, to identify and mitigate the paradoxes of participation and redress institutional barriers in order to meaningfully engage with issue areas presented by Global South stakeholders. Secondly, to co-construct and formalize roles with Global South actors to substantively engage in AI governance processes. And thirdly, to engage in historic analysis of exclusionary governance processes and the uneven distribution of AI risks. Thank you very much.